afternoon, Bronx country. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Bronx TV, giving you the latest of what is happening on campus. Today's Friday, October 18th, 2013, and I am Julieta Paredes. And I'm Alex Peña. Today we look at a controversy involving the UTPA student. We check your polls on gun control issues. Also, an in-depth look at the week that was Hashtag, as well as Community Day. A two-time Nobel Peace Prize winner speaks to UTPA students about space and the environment. Also, your weekly weather forecast. But first, the UTPA student. A current UTPA student found himself in trouble against the University of Texas Pan American. Andres Ramos, also known as the UTPA student, was told to shut down his account. Orlando Vargas has a story. Andres Ramos remembers the day he came up with an idea for increasing UTPA student pride. I just grabbed my camera and I started taking pictures of everything, anything, school pride. He created the unofficial organization, the UTPA Student, a project that became a reality within weeks last year. You know, I'm trying to promote school pride where you take a picture, you know, hey, you can find your picture at the UTPA Student on Facebook. Give it a like. And became a nightmare before the start of this fall semester. Ramos claims UTPA officials held a meeting with him in August for possible trademark infringements. Hey, you know, you're being accused that you might have broken the student code of conduct. Uh, if you don't come to the meeting, we're going to proceed with, without your, your input. According to Ramos, the meeting concluded with demands for him to seize all operations involving the UTPA student, his use of the Bronx sign, the UTPA logo, and the use of the green and orange colors. Hey, have you ever taken pictures with... Uh, logos and stuff like that. I'm like, yes. I mean, but we had permission back then. And we did. We don't do it after, after that. We didn't do it. We spoke to the UTPA Dean of Students who stood by the university's decision to take legal action against the student if he did not stop. When somebody misuses or misrepresents um, their organization or themselves individually, um, then we have the right to question and then to ask them to cease and desist in that behavior. This comes as a clear warning to students who might be thinking about using UTPA trademark logos for their own personal or financial gain. The university and the UT system does pursue what we feel is misuse because again it, it hurts the image of the university. The communication that goes out there that is not aligned to our mission then uh, misrepresents us as sponsoring, supportive, condoning certain entities or organizations that aren't in our same mission. And so that's when we have to then use the code of conduct if we find that students misuse our logo seals and other trademark and copyrighted material. Ramos states that over the course of the time that the UTPA student existed, UTPA administration never claimed any trademark infringements or any other violations. He adds that he personally asked Dr. Nelson if what he was doing was illegal. He says his response was no. We were unable to contact Dr. Nelson to verify the statement. Nobody approached me saying, hey, what you're doing is wrong. Hey, you shouldn't be promoting clubs. Hey, uh, can you stop? But that was before the university found out that he was promoting clubs and bars under the name the UTPA student. Flyers posted on his social media sites show countless events that appeal to students. He claims he never received any profit from hosting events at these venues. We didn't really make any money from it. Part of what we did is student life, you know, from a student point of view, like I said. And to us, um, and to me, you know, student life is not coming to school, you know, that's not it. Student life is also outside of Penang. Now that he stopped operating the UTPA student, Ramos feels university officials could have treated the situation differently. It's disappointing the way they handle it, I don't think I deserve to be treated like that, to, fi to be felt, to be treated and make me feel like if I was a criminal after all the, you know, the hard work, the thing. I'm not sad or mad. I'm actually, I'm, I'm not glad, but I'm actually putting it close to this chapter. Reporting from UTPA, Orlando Vargas, Bronx TV News. Thank you very much, Orlando, for that very interesting piece. Gun control is a very sensitive subject. While some are in favor, others disapprove of it. Our man on the street, or a woman for that matter, went around campus to gather your thoughts and opinions on this controversial issue. Here's our very own Sonia Flores. Sonia, take it away. 
On July 20th, 2012, a man opened fire inside a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado, killing 12 people. And just four and a half months later, a man broke into Sandy Hook Elementary in Newtown, Connecticut, killing 20 children. A month after the shooting, Barack Obama, the president, um, Barack Obama announced his, pro his proposals for announcing on gun control. His proposals included background checks on purchasing guns, as well as limiting magazine capacity to 10 cartridges. Our nation has suffered too much at the hands of dangerous people who use guns to commit horrific acts of violence. Students at UTPA were asked on their opinion on gun violence. I think in its current state, it could be elevated so that it could be more controlled. Not anybody has that mental capability to handle a weapon. People should possibly also be evaluated for psychological. Do you think the government should have limitations on gun control? Um, either way, if they do have limits, then fine. I know from reading different things out there in the news, you can go back in the black market and buy basically anything you want from government that they're throwing under the table. I think a background check should be definitely unnecessary. Maybe not necessarily just about the one person who has it, but those who are around them, because it's obviously pretty easy to get one from somebody else. Do you think it's okay for Pennsylvania school teachers to be armed on campus, and why? Well, I don't think any teacher should be allowed to be carrying a permitted weapon because any teacher would, could snap at any moment. It can go both ways. You can have arm and okay, everyone's safe, right? Like let's say someone comes in, it's like, okay, they're armed, they can defend themselves. But then at the same time, what if the teacher themselves is kind of like a psychomaniac and turn against like their own phys uh, faculty, you know? Thank you very much, Sonia. I know personally, I would not want to attend a school where students or faculty members are allowed to carry guns on campus. You never quite know where a person's head is psychologically at any given point in time. Yes, I think uh, gun control is a big issue. I don't think guns should be used in any, any university or in any place, actually. I definitely agree. It's going to be a topic where people are just bumping heads with each other, and we'll see how it progresses with time here in the U.S. Now in lighter news, on to Karina with the weekend updates for the weather. Thank you, Alex and Julie. As we can see, temperatures will remain constant throughout the whole week with highs in the 80s and lows in the 60s. I do want to point out how on Friday and Saturday, we will have a small chance of showers, but those showers will be gone by Sunday and Monday. On Tuesday, though, the chance of showers comes back again. We have a 30% chance of rain. The chance of rain will be gone by Wednesday. On Thursday, we do have a small cold front coming in at 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So all you guys have to do is bundle up. I want to remind you guys that you all need to be driving safe, especially if it's raining. And I hope you guys did awesome on those midterms. Back to the studio, guys. Thank you, Karina. It, lo it looks like this weekend we're going to have to be canceling some barbecues, right, Alex? Definitely. That I had some very interesting outdoor plans this weekend, but the weather didn't cooperate. The weather did cooperate, however, last week during Hashtag Week. You were at Hashtag, right? How did that work out for you? I went to pretty much all the events. I had a chance to dabble in all the presentations and uh, events that happened. It's not easy to cram in seven days worth of activities into two and a half minutes. I tried my best. So here's the week in resume of Hestech. Fighting robots, rock climbing, working in space, and banking seminars? Yes. The 12th annual Hashtag Week had this and much more. Hashtag featured many events geared towards educating people of all ages and backgrounds in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math, otherwise referred to as STEM. I encourage a lot of people to come here and like come to these like little events because this program is like really neat and it can help out a lot of people. Like how they talk about like things have changed and how like jobs from back then are different from how they are today. High school and middle school students from across the Rio Grande Valley attended the week-long event, which featured presenters like filmmaker and explorer Philip Cousteau, Telemundo News anchor Jose Diaz Balab, and Channel 5 News anchor Leti Garza. As one of the keynote speakers, UTB graduate Ediberto Reynoso shared his previous Hestic experience. I have the perfect life lesson. I Back in 2005, I was in the first robotics competition here at Hestec. I was in their shoes. I competed in the robotics competition and I lost and that kind of propelled me, it moved me and I was compelled to persevere. I was determined to end up 
and better places. Test Day kicked off on Monday with Educator Day, where teachers from South Texas engaged in workshops and learned about the global needs in the STEM workforce. On Tuesday, students were introduced to a wide range of career opportunities in STEM. Wednesday, dedicated Latina Day to a celebration of women who have persevered and excelled in those fields. Um, being really close to our mother, how they inspired us to continue going to college, how they were not fully acquired, but she was, she got acquired to college, but inspires us to keep on going higher into our levels. But the main event was definitely Robotics Day. Start. All right, here we go. This year we had the new complications of actually programming our robot and last year we just used it like a video game basically. Students built and programmed customized Lego robots, then pitted them in a fighting competition against other student-made robots. Reynoso had a few simple words for students planning their careers early. I tell them to find their passion right now. Find what they want to do for the rest of their lives. Pursue it. It doesn't matter if it's a high-paying job or a low-paying job. If you enjoy it, you'll never work a day in your life. Career Expo followed on Friday, and Hestech concluded with Community Day on Saturday. For Bronx TV, this is Alex Pena. This year, like every year, Hestech was a big success. And Community Day brought people from all over the valley to enjoy a fun family day. Raquel Gonzalez has the details. The smell of funnel cake in the air, music streaming in the background, and the sounds of kids laughing is just a reminder that Hestech Community Day is here at UTDA. Community Day is one of the largest single day events in South Texas, and it's for a great cause. Dozens of vendors sell a variety of snacks fit for the entire family. A lot of these guys that are, uh, that are doing the robotics in Hestech, there are a lot of low income families that you know, if you go to their neighborhoods, they live in some really, really like shanty houses, little cardboard sheds, and these guys are just trying to make it and trying to get an opportunity to, to better themselves. Like these guys want to make it out there, and once they do and they have the opportunities that Hestec provides for them, the sky's the limit. It is also a great way to get out there and promote your organization. I think it's a great way to get our organization to be known um, and the community the community comes and gets together, so they get to experience different uh, types of cultural uh, food. And the unique sounds of Sebastián de la Cruz and the award-winning Mariachi Aslan from UTPA. Por amor, se han criado los hombres en la faz de la tierra. Hestech will open the doors and launch the future for many young hopefuls in the Rio Grande Valley. For Bronx TV, I am Raquel Gonzalez. Thank you, Raquel. It looks like Community Day was a great time. A two-time Nobel Peace Prize winner spoke to students about the mysteries that exist in space. Nancy Botello went to see Dr. Alex Filipenko, and here's what she had to say. Supernovas, black holes, and gamma ray bursts. These are a few things Dr. Alex Filipenko, the award-winning astrophysicist from UC Berkeley, covered during his lecture here at UTPA in front of a packed house at the Student Union Theater. When an opportunity falls on, in your lap, you know, grab it, take advantage of it. Don't squander such opportunities. Dr. Filipenko is a two-time Nobel Prize winning team member. His lecture was a part of the STEM lecture series presented by the Graduate School at the University of Texas Pan American. Suppose I put one on top of the other. Watch what happens. See that? Woohoo! So far, this has been the biggest event for the STEM lecture series. Um, when the entire student union was filled up and it spilled over to the student union theater outside and um, I think it was just a great event to promote our STEM lecture series. My favorite part was when the professor was showing that the galaxy is actually expanding and drifting apart from other galaxies. In that empty space, the universe is getting bigger. Students space. and guests at the university had the opportunity to learn about some mysteries of the universe this past Tuesday. We are made from stuff generated by stars. So you're not just within the cosmos. You're not just within the universe, you're an integral part of the history of the universe. I've watched a lot of things about uh, the universe before on TV, and, uh, and it just uh, made me a little bit more intrigued, I guess. There's uh, you know, a lot of people out there really studying it a lot, and um, you know, the more we know, the more it could help us with whatever problems we may have in the future. 
Be sure to check out the Office of Graduate Studies for all future STEM lectures. For Bronx TV, I am Nancy Boteo. The Division of Information Technology is a proud supporter of Bronx TV. A portion of today's funding is underwritten by the Division of IT to support all student TV stations. The Division of IT offers Bronx Mail, Bronx Print, Bronx Software, and other various services. The IT Support Desk is located at the Academic Service Building and is open from Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. 8 a.m. through 6 p.m. Technical support is also available at 665-2020. That number again, 665-2020. And for more information, please visit online at www.utpa.edu slash IT. If you have any Bronx TV. You can message us on Facebook or tweet us at Bronx TV Radio with hashtag story idea. Thank you for watching this edition of Bronx TV Radio. I am Julieta Paredes. And I'm Alex Peña. Stay safe and we'll talk to you in two weeks. Thank you for watching.